is I'm going to draw a note on the staff and we're going to go over together on what note it is. We're going to first start out with the treble clef, you know, doing notes on the staff, and then we're going to do some notes off the staff with the ledger lines as well. So let's get into it. So here is the treble clef. I'm just going to draw one note and then I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about it. You know, pause the video if you need to. We're going to start a little bit easier here. So you always have to ask yourself really two questions. First question is, are you on treble clef or bass clef? Well, I just said we were doing treble clef, so obviously we're there. And then you want to ask yourself, is it a line or a space? And then you want to figure out from there, you know, which line or space it is and what letter corresponds to that space. So this is the top space. Remember, we're always counting from the bottom line to the top line. So from down here to up here, and not the other way around, because then we won't be get, we would be getting the notes all in reverse. So we're going to go from the bottom to the top. So this one, this note right here is what? What do you think? Leave it in the comments if you know. But it is a, remember that the spaces spell face. So that must be an E right there. Let's try another one. Now how about this one? So this one, is it on treble clef or bass clef? Well, obviously, right? It is on treble clef. And is it on a line or space? Well, it's the line's going straight through it, so it must be on a line. It's that second line of the treble clef. Pause the video if you need more time to think. This note is a G, right? Because the lines of the treble clef are E, G, B, D, and F. And then that one is the second one up from the bottom. Remember, the most important thing of the lesson we did last time was that you have to, do, when figuring these out, you have to go from the bottom, bottom line or space, to the top line or space. Let's try another one. What about this one? This one's very close to the note we did just play, right? What was the note we played before? Well, we said G, right? which was right there. That G, by the way, is right here on the piano keyboard. Remembering that middle C down there, a ledger line below the staff, is right here. That's middle C right in the front of your keyboard or piano. So this G is five up from there. And then the note above it, notice how this G is on a line and that this B is on a line. Well, that means that they are, if it's line to line, connecting each other, that they are three away. One, two, three. So that top note, you can figure out by figuring out the distance, or you can do it by using, you know, whatever saying you come up with to figure out the lines or spaces. So this one is going to be, pause the video if you need more time to think, it's going to be a B, and that's going to be right here on the piano keyboard. What about this? I just moved it up one, right? So you don't really have to think about it too hard because if we were right here on the piano, remember that I mentioned in the other lesson that you just move up one on the keyboard. And inversely, if you move down on the staff, you know, you move down on the keyboard, sorry, from C going down to this A right here. What if I draw a note right actually let me draw a few notes let's draw three notes because that's realistic right in music a lot of times we see notes in clusters otherwise it wouldn't be music it would just be notes let me get that in frame for us there we go so here we are remember that i mentioned that if it's on a what we call a ledger line the lines that they add as we move down below the staff or above the staff the first ledger line is going to be c and that's middle C, right? Right in the middle of the keyboard. Well, it's going from line, right? And this next one's a space, and they're touching. Well, that means that they touch on the piano keyboard, too. So, so if this one's C, this one's definitely D, and this one's E. They call this kind of motion stepping motion, by the way. Okay, now what if it was like this? Well, you see how it goes now from line to line, to line. Well, that skips, right? Because it's skipping over the spaces. It skips on the staff, so that means it's going to skip on the keyboard 
as well. And by skipping, I mean you're just leaving one note out in between. You're leaving out the D, leaving out the F. Okay, here we go. We have four notes, you know, going across here. Our first note, top space of the treble clef, that is going to be the last letter in face, which is E. So you have E, and that, that E, right, that's not going to be this E. This E in the middle of the keyboard is on the bottom line down here. It's a lot closer to middle C. That's how you should think about when, um, how far away things are from middle C is what you should think about when determining how far away they are, right? So you can tell right away that this note right here is pretty far away from middle C down there. So you know that it has to be the E up here. So that's just one way you figure that out. So you have E, right? You see how it goes from space to space to space? Well, that means they skip again, right? So they go. And then take a look here, though. It goes from space to E. So one thing I want you to look at when you read music is patterns. See how there's a pattern there of skipping? And then you see right here, though, that it breaks the pattern. So you always have to be aware of when the pattern changes. Because a lot of times in our mind, we'll see something and it will continue to fill it out. Uh, like, if I wasn't paying attention, basically, I might think this last note might be an F. And then it fits the pattern. But you have to be aware of when things do not look the same. So this is going from A, and then the last one is going to be the bottom line, which is going to be E. So we've got... And then a lot of people ask me about fingering. I'm just going to kind of fit this into here. So we have four notes, right? We have an E on the top. We have an E on the top. And we have an E on the bottom. Right? That's our top note and our bottom note. We call that the range. And you want to have your outermost fingers around the range. Now, you want to fit your other fingers on the other notes as comfortable as you can. And then just play from the top of the range to the bottom. And if you use that little method, you can generally discern what the fingering is for a certain passage of music. So once again, you take the top note, the bottom note, that's your range, and you want your hand to fit that range. And that's generally what hand position you should be in. So now we're going to some bass clef ones, right? So we have a note right here. What note is that? Let's make it a little bit larger for us. What note would that be? Well, that note is the top space of the bass clef. That has to be G, right? Since the saying is all cows eat grass, G for grass. So that's G. One thing I want to point out about bass clef that we talked about in the other lesson was that middle C is right there for bass clef. And middle C is kind of where a treble clef and bass clef intersect. But the, both of those notes are the same note. Okay, so we have middle C here. And then as you move down a note, I move down that way. So a lot of the notes in bass clef are from middle C downwards. Like right there, what note is that? Well, that's C, right? So it's all cows eat grass, or that's the saying we use. That C has to be right here, right? Since it's definitely not middle C. Middle C is up there. You can see that there's quite a range between those two notes of an octave. So always be aware of how far apart notes are. Okay, what about this one? Now we're on a line. We are on the third line up. So remember that the lines of the bass clef are good. Well, if you do the saying, but it's G. B, and then this middle one is going to be D. And that D is down here. All right, we're going to do a couple more. Let's do four across now. But what are those four notes? You have top space of the bass clef, which is G right here. Because remember, it's pretty close to middle C, right? Middle C is right there. So it's just a few down from there. So it's going to be that G. So you have G. And then, hey, there's no movement. It just has G again. And then you have the next space, which is E, right, for all cows eat. And then, hey, take a look. You notice how you have a space here in this note and a space up here? And it goes space, no space, space. 
in terms of your notes? Well, that means that you're actually going to be skipping twice. So you take E, you skip over F, you have G, you skip that over A to hit B. So that last one must be B. Another way you can think about it is that note is awfully close to a note we do know, which is middle C. So that one has to be B. It's right underneath it. So you also want to be using anchor points to determine where other notes are. So say you had this note up here or down here. Sorry, we're in bass clef. And you're like, man, I don't know what note that is, right? It's below the staff. I'm not as familiar with that. The number one thing you want to do is find the closest note you do know. That happens to be G, right? Right here. And you just go down one. That tells you your answer. Okay, we're going to practice a few ledger lines. We're going to start with the treble clef. This is a line above the top line of the staff. That's one way I would think about it. What note is this? So pause the video if you need and think about it and you know unpause it when you're ready so this note right here is how am i going to figure this out right that's what i want to walk us through so we are going to take the closest note we probably do know and that's that top line which happens to be f right for the saying every good boy deserves fries f for fries and that note is going to be kind of far up right since middle c is a far cry from that note middle c is way down there I'm not sure why I wrote it like that, but there it is. So once you have the F there, you just go up two, right? Since you're going from line to line. And remember when I said whenever you're going from line to line to line, space to space to space, you're going to be skipping notes. So you have F, you skip over G, and skip over A. Now why do I say skip over? Well, when you have A up here, if I move that down, that note's right next to each other. And then when I move it one more, you skip over the note that we just had. What note is this? So pause the video if you need to to think about it. How are we going to figure out this note? So let's think about it. Let's pick the closest note we do know, which is probably middle C. Oops, that is not middle C, that's D. There's middle C, right? So here's middle C. And hey, we're going from line to line again. So this note must be, if you skip down over B, right on to A. What note is this on the treble clef? Think about it for a minute and pause the video if you need to of course if you're watching this in the live stream you can't do that but uh anyway this note has to be if it's close to a note we do know f those notes are touching right since if i move this f over see how they're touching so f up to g that note must be g right there okay we're going to do a few ledger lines for the bass clef what note is that? Is it middle C? You may be thinking, well, it looks like middle C, right? It's the exact same place Tim said middle C was in. It's really weird to refer to myself in the third person, but anyway, it's, you may be thinking that. Well, that's not middle C, because remember, middle C for the bass clef has to be up here, because a lot of people get that confused. Also, middle C is down here for the treble clef. So if I draw a middle C here, and a middle C here. These two are middle C, right? And think about this, think about it this way. It's at the bottom for the treble clef because the middle of the piano is low if you're coming from the top. It's at the top of the bass clef because if you're coming from the bottom, the bass, you're moving up towards the middle. So you're coming down from the middle with treble, up from the middle with bass and those two only this one and this one are middle C so now what is this note now that I've quizzed you about it well it is going to be let's find the closest note we do know which is down here probably this G right here that's two down from that right it's just skipping once again what note is this this note is going to be what well what are we going to do we are going to find the closest note we do know which i would say is probably middle c because we went over middle c plenty in this lesson and hey it's right next to middle c right right below it so that must be b so that's how you figure out these notes you want to be practicing note reading almost every day probably every day actually 
there is a an exercise I'll leave a link into for the description. It's musictheory.net. And if you actually go there and you just find the note reading exercise, that's the one you want to do. And you want to practice that uh, pretty much every day. And you want to practice them hands separate at first, or I mean like one clef at a time. And then, you know, you want to slowly work your way into reading both clefs at a time. I think that's in the exercise. I'm not entirely sure. But, you know, you can actually practice reading music both hands at a time just by finding, like, a lesson book somewhere and reading your way through it. It is something that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of practice. It's not something that will come to you all at once. And it's like anything, right? I say this in a lot of the live streams, and it's that if you want to get better at something, there's, you know, there's methods to do it, but the best way always is just to do that thing more. So if you're you're saying, you know, I'm really struggling with reading both clefs at the same time, you should do that more. Now, that the challenge in that is finding the right way to practice that. And like I said, I would find a lesson book or I'd just find really easy songs that maybe have like whole notes in the left hand with half notes in the right hand to make it as easy as possible in the beginning. And then just work your way up, like play really, really easy stuff every single day new stuff every single day and then slowly work your way up to the more difficult stuff and that's how you should do it if you're you're just trying something out that you've always wanted to play and you just can't get it hands together no matter how hard you try it might be because it's a little bit above your level now it could be because of a bunch of different reasons but it could be because you know you're just trying something a little bit too tough right now you should go back and, and read through some easier things, right? So if you're trying to get better at a language or speaking a language or reading a language, you want to do that every day to get better at it. What well, note is this? This note is going to be what? Well, what are we going to do? We are going to find the closest note we do know, which I would say is probably middle C because we went over middle C plenty in this lesson. And hey, it's right next to middle C, right? Right below it. So that must be B. So that's how you figure out these notes. You want to be practicing note reading almost every day, probably every day, actually. There is a an exercise I'll leave a link into for the description. It's musictheory.net. And if you actually go there and you just find the note reading exercise, that's the one you want to do. And you want to practice that. Uh, pretty much every day and you want to practice them hands separate at first or I mean like one clef at a time and then you know you want to slowly work your way into reading both clefs at a time I think that's in the exercise I'm not entirely sure but you know you can actually practice reading music both hands at a time just by finding like a lesson book somewhere and reading your way through it it is something that takes a lot of time it takes a lot of practice it's not something that will come to you all at once. And it's like anything, right? I say this in a lot of the live streams, and it's that if you want to get better at something, there's, you know, there's methods to do it, but the best way always is just to do that thing more. So if you're you're saying, you know, I'm really struggling with reading both clefs at the same time, you should do that more. Now that the challenge in that is finding the right way to practice that. And like I said, I would find a lesson book or I'd just find really easy songs that maybe have like whole notes in the left hand with half notes in the right hand to make it as easy as possible in the beginning. And then just work your way up, like play really, really easy stuff every single day, new stuff every single day, and then slowly work your way up to the more difficult stuff. And that's how you should do it. If you're, you're just trying something out, that you've always wanted to play and you just can't get it hands together no matter how hard you try. It might be because it's a little bit above your level. Now, it could be because of a bunch of different reasons, but it could be because, you know, you're just trying something a little bit too tough right now. You should go back and, and read through some easier things, right? So if you're trying to get better at a language or speaking a language or reading a language, you want to do that every day to get better at it.